the Whaler guys here at Sergeant Street. This is World Headquarters for the Whaler guys and the Whaler's Brigade. Peter Hindle from TheExaminer.com and tonight we are thrilled to have as a special guest our defenseman, Sylvain Cote, number 21. Good evening, Sylvain. Good evening. How's it going? Very good, very good. Is the summer treating you pretty well? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's going the right way here. You know, with my new career now, I'm the board captain here in Ocean City, Maryland. So, uh, some time and, uh, Oh wow, that's phenomenal. So what did you think of uh, the Stanley Cup Finals? Hey, Sylvain, this is Peter Hindle. Uh, thank, thank you very much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, you know, uh, talking about fishing, uh, we just ran into in Westbrook the uh, world record striper holder. His name is Greg Meyerson. He caught an 81 pound uh, striper out there, 54 inches long. Have you been uh, catching, do you catch stripers out there in, uh, in uh, out, where are you going? Uh, we go through the winter time here. Uh, we'll catch them offshore. And uh, the, the Chesapeake Bay, the Brave Bay, That's great. Now, if, were you always into fishing, or is it something that you kind of grew to love as you, when you after you retired from hockey? No, I always love, I always love it. It's one of those few things that I'm really patient. Like I've been fishing all day, not getting a bite all day, for twelve hours, and I and I wish I could, I would love to stay for one more hour. <laughs> Have you gone? Uh, have you done any fishing with the, any of uh, the former whalers? Any former whalers go fishing with you? No, but I remember back in uh, I think it was back in 1990, uh, we had a summer vacation there with Kevin and Dave. <laughs> uh, was there was with us and uh, Joe Blanco, uh, Dave Tippett, and uh, and myself. We rented a house in Bermuda, and we all went fishing. Mike Hughes, and uh, and we all went fishing. Uh, yeah, so. Wow, that's just fantastic. Yeah. So now, now in your retirement, uh, y y it sounds like you stay pretty ca uh, pretty active with the Capitals organization. We saw a lot of pictures on Facebook uh, with, uh, especially Winter Classic. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I try. Like, you no, know, we uh, we have a lot of fun here. Like, uh, you know, we have a very strong alumni. Uh, I don't think. Self-respect, a whole lot of the, a lot of alumni history of, of the club. Uh, maybe something of the past. Maybe they're going to start working at it. But uh, we don't do a whole lot. But I try to keep my feet wet in the organization. Uh, I do a lot of the school clinic. Uh, every time they ask, you know, for me to come and help, and especially for the kids, I can never say no. I'm always available. And, uh, you know, and I stay in contact with a few other people in the organization, like the front office a little bit, just, you know, so they're aware that I'm still living around and if they need any help, so I can take them always. There you go. 
That's great. You know, uh, back about five years, we had um, uh, a summer fest here at Rensselaer Field in East Hartford when uh, Howard Baldwin and Whaler Sports and Entertainment were, uh, were rebranding the, the Wolf Pack to the Connecticut Whale. And uh, they had several players, Kevin Deneen, Ron Francis, Joel Quenville was here, and uh, Dana Merzen, Paul Lawless. And in the summertime, for a team that doesn't exist anymore, um, the, the city and, and uh, Whaler Sports and Entertainment uh, attracted 5,000 people. Uh, it was just amazing on a hot summer day that uh, the Whaler fans came out in, in numbers uh, to see uh, who back then were their heroes. Um, and so, you know, the Hartford fan base is still very strong up here. Yeah, man, I can't see that. Like, oh, like, oh, uh, like on Facebook, and a lot of people from Connecticut, like, oh, uh, Do you ever make it back up this way at all uh, in the off season? Uh, I was up there. Uh, well, a lot of my friends, uh, you know, that were my age, I used to hang out with. Uh, I, I moved from Connecticut, and uh, I had the opportunity two years ago uh, to go with my son. Uh, he had a couple of games on the outskirts of uh, Hartford, and uh, I met up with some friends and, and friends and family members, and we had nice dinners. And uh, it's always nice to, to, to go back with them. I really enjoyed, uh, you know, I, I, I did, I really, really enjoyed uh, to live in. Uh, not only just to play there, but I, I, made, I, I made a decision when I, when I was there that I was going to live there. And I actually paid the entire summer. I never went back. And, and I would, you know, enjoy the community and, and, and live around it and learn about the city. And, and Hartford was fun. I mean, you know, I was young and there was a lot of cultures nearby, so it was always a good uh, a lot of young people to hang, to hang with. Yeah, it was. Uh, we had we had quite a fan base when when you were here, and and, and obviously the team was most successful when you were here. And you know, everyone keeps going back to that. And obviously, the NHL has been in town uh, recently. Uh, there's still there's Hartford still on the radar, and you know, for all the. The, the Whaler diehards, yep, they're still plugging away, and there's been some remodels to now what's called the XL Center, which was the Civic Center when you played here. So they've, uh, they're have they still in the game, and the NHL is still interested in Hartford, whether uh, it be a relocation team or what the NHL wants to do. So we're kind of excited about it, and uh, and the Whaler fans that knows when you play and the whole Whaler mania thing that took off when you were here are still still hoping to get an NHL club back here. Yeah, my, in my own town too, like on the uh, Pillow Brain Stadium, and the, uh, and, and hopefully, like, trying to, to, to have the NHL to, the, you know, help them out to have a team. And uh, I don't know if it's something that the NHL will be looking into bringing a team to Quebec City, but it's another town too that's well deserved. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, there's some great rivalries between the, the Whalers, Quebec, and of course, Quebec and Montreal. and uh, you know, have you have you heard anything about Quebec City? Uh, you know, in terms of them uh, getting a, an effort to get a team. I know they're building a new arena, um, but but do you think uh, do you think eventually the NHL will go back to Quebec City? I think so. I mean, uh, I, I think Quebec recently, like more often than the last the years before, and, and the city has really grown. It's it, it, it has become a really big business. Uh, I mean, like, it, it's, it's not just a government uh, town. It, it's a lot of industry, a lot of companies, and uh, it, it, it's really flourishing well. And I think now they will be able to sustain, uh, you know, a 19,000 uh, uh, capacity uh, arena and uh, it, it be able to, to do really well. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a it looks like a really nice arena. Uh, you know, we, we're still wondering 
uh, you know, how long it'll be because we, we really think Quebec City would be a great place for, uh, you know, because it'd be great to have that uh, kind of that Adams Division feel back, uh, you know, if, if Hartford got a team and Quebec got a team. But, you know, that, that's a little bit down the road, of course. We'll, we'll just see where that goes. But, uh, you know, in talking about your, your uh, life as a whaler, uh, you know, it's like Jerry said, 84 to 91, uh, and you have about 382 games as a whaler. Uh, 31 goals and I think it's 62 assists over that time uh, and you know it, it, it encompasses a good part of your career but over the 19 years uh, what's what's most memorable to you about about your NHL career? Uh, I, I, I think it was when I was with uh, Dallas when we went to Spain. Uh, oh yeah yeah. It was, it was really uh, I was amazed of how fast every round season I believe uh, from, That's from, right, yeah. yeah yeah and you only played one that one year in Dallas so is, is it uh, you just you just hit the team at the right time was it is it the team when when you were going into Dallas did you did you have a feeling that, that team had uh, you know a really great chance to compete for the Stanley Cup was that in your thoughts yeah I mean I know that one the year before and it was trying to do it again and uh, I think you know there were trying to to uh, to get some players with experience and, and with some of with some longevity, uh, you know, in their career, mm-hmm. and uh, so I kind of fit it, fit it in there. And uh, you know, I would, you know, the you know, see, I started in Toronto when we started the season. I think we were four or five and zero, and when we started, you know, playing in Toronto and like the neck of hockey was it was just a dream come true. And I got traded to Chicago, and I was at the time I think like zero and seven. When you when you do think back to your time here with the Whalers, uh, you know, is there is there any particular guy in the locker room who uh, would ham it up? Who who's the guy that you, would make you guys laugh in the locker room? Uh, you know, when you were with the Whalers, do you, do you have any memories of that? Uh, there was a lot of there was, you know, there was a lot of funny guys in the dressing <laughs> room, like uh, you know, it, 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 it,
Now, do your kids get involved with the fishing? Do you take them out? I'm trying to work just down in with me at the end of the day, so I'm, I'm trying to, to do the young, to get the love and the passion for it. But they, you know, they, they have their own, uh, you know, uh, passion too for different things. And, but, I, but, you know, when the fishing gets really good in the summertime, uh, here in September, we'll have world-class bill uh, fishing action. Oh, that that's great, and, and obviously, you know, I have I have a couple of kids, and my daughter got married last year, and my son's in college, and they just grow up way too fast, and you have to take advantage of the time you have with them. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. They were just down there this past the last three days, and, and uh, we had an awesome time, and you know, a good family time. And it was, uh, you know, it was it was really enjoyable. That's great. Yeah, so, Vin, I always wanted to, to know, because I, I love fishing too, So, but what's the most interesting or amazing thing that, uh, that you've either seen or caught uh, in your time when you're, when you're out there fishing? Uh, a couple of years ago, we caught like a 725 pound blue marlin, wow. and uh, we, you know, we had to bring it to the boat, and, and then we got out the scale here, and, and you know, big crowd, and, and you know, you it's very hard to estimate how much they weigh until you pull them up there and you see them scale it's at 725 pounds. Just to think that a creature like that, like not just live in the ocean and roams around. Oh, yeah. yeah, no question. Now, do you do a lot of, when you go back to Quebec, do you do uh, like a lot of pike fishing, northern pike fishing? No, I do a lot of pike fishing with my family uh, during the wintertime down, down in Quebec uh, in late January. Uh, we ran the road uh, low out. Uh, we'll shed there on the water, and we, and that's our family tradition. That's what we do, and we really, we really have fun doing that. How, how much ice do you have to cut through to uh, to be able to put a line into the water in the winter? Uh, it's only cut, man. It's all, it's all pre made, it's all, it's all heated. It's, I mean, it's, it's, wow. it's ready to go once we get there. Wow. That's, I mean, that's... the ice gets pretty really thick, though, because we drive our car right there, we park right alongside of it. So, as it burns, the ice is probably five feet. So in other words, I shouldn't complain about Connecticut's weather then, huh? <laughs> no, oh my God, the shoes here in Maryland here, they, they cancel school because it's too cold. And I remember when I was walking to school when it was minus 40, <laughs> walking to school in a blizzard, like, you know, like, they never closed school. I mean, they never really did close school up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here in Maryland, they closed school just in case, like the day before, just in case it's gonna snow. <laughs> and most of the time, it never snow, and the next day, like, the only kids are out of school, like because they were calling for snow. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I witnessed that firsthand in 2010 when I was down in uh, Quantico, Virginia, for 10 weeks, and uh, that was the year uh, down there got 54 inches of snow in one week, and uh, I ended up getting trapped in a parking lot for four hours. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I remember that year, like. Uh, I do a lot of uh, some plowing in the winter time, and that was, uh, yeah, that was, a, there was, that was a pretty good for plowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's just, just, uh, you know, it, it's amazing about the fishing, uh, you know, because uh, there's there's a lot of people that like to go out uh, on the ocean. Now, do you do you actually run a charter and, and bring, like, uh, tourists out fishing with you? Yeah, yeah, that's what we did. That's what we did today. We had five people, and, uh, you know, we, we had to battle the weather today. Well, if there's if there's whaler fans in the area around you or something, uh, and they're interested in uh, going out with you, uh, what, would you have a website that they could uh, go to? No, but you can contact me there with my Facebook page. Oh, okay, on Facebook. That's where I post most, uh, post most of the pictures of the fish we catch. Oh, okay, great. All right, well, we'll direct those people uh, because we have we have a bunch of people on our Whalers Brigade page, and uh, through the other two pages that we contribute to, there's there's probably about forty thousand uh, loyal Whaler fans up here. So we'll start pl plugging it out, and maybe get some more business down there. Yeah, 
Very well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to let you go, and uh, we, we really appreciate your time. Uh, I know you've been on the water all day, so have an adult beverage for each of us, <laughs> and enjoy yourself. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you very much, Sylvain. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, it was great to talk to him. Uh, you know, we haven't. Uh, he's one of the whalers that you don't really see a lot of because he's he kind of went off and kind of did his own career thing. He's changing. Well, it, his sounds like, it sounds like it sounds like he's enjoying the good like life. He said, yeah, yeah, he said he knew. You know, maybe there was opportunities back when he was playing that he didn't have, and now that he has kids, uh, he wants to take advantage of it. And you know, like he said, riding snowmobiles with his father. Yeah. Uh, you know, those are things that you just can't get back. You know, as the years go on. So, yeah, yeah. so good for him. Uh, you know. I always go out fishing and never catch a damn thing. So, you know, I give him a lot of credit. You know, you plus, I don't a, swim. So. You catch a cold. That's catch a cold. Can. That's it. You yeah, fall yeah. in the water and thrash around like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, it was great to see him because, uh, you know, I remember him being, being number 21. I remember he was a younger guy. And as I told you, imagine that. Your defensive lineman is Joe Quinville, a guy that won three cups. And, and I have to say, incredible. you know what I was most surprised about yeah. is how the Washington Capitals don't have a huge alumni. Yeah. You know, and, a, and a following. I would be blown away. I would think that, you know, that's a that's a... That's a, a storied history of a hockey club, yeah. and you would think they have here. Rod Langway, yeah. you talk about you know Dale Hunter, yeah. you know all these oh, other yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. And, and really, I think there would be more than that. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't a, Dean Everson was an assistant coach a couple of years ago. Yeah, 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 and you know it's, it's funny because I remember in the '90s, uh, early '90s. I mean, Liu got traded there. Mm-hmm. Tippett was a capital. Yep. Paul McDermott was a capital. Yep. Sylvain Cote was a yep. capital. Yep. Todd Krieger was a capital. Yep. But I just never really could latch on to the capitals. But uh, and then yeah. we, you know, you you we talked about you know when the, when the fan fest was here and how many people actually came back. You know, yeah. you, you know, you had a bunch of whalers that came back, and it's one of those things where wow, you know, it sounds like we have more of an alumni for a team that doesn't exist. Right. For a short period of time we had our hockey club here right, right. and it was short you know yeah. you know i'm not disrespecting the whalers because we had a short time until they were taken right. away from right. us um yeah and we, we were kind of like the whaler fans have been kind of dormant uh you know but in recent years uh and maybe we have a little bit to do with that but you know yeah, yeah a little bit but yeah, uh and yeah. you guys yeah you and know, you let's, guys let's make it clear yeah the brigade, yeah the brigade yeah. is all oh, yeah. we don't exist if the brigade doesn't that's uh, right march, you guys so. are the ones pushing we're helping you out but you guys yeah, are the ones right. with the shirts the hats and we believe that the whalers are coming back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like I said, you know, if he was even if he was there, it'd be just another whaler that uh, was part of that whole group. I mean, sure. uh, at the uh, the fan fest, which was such a great time, and uh, it would really be great if somebody would do that again, uh, because you know, as pointed, I think even the, you know, I'm not sure of this per se, but I I think even the NHL took notice that five thousand people showed up for a remember when event in the middle of summer. Uh, it was like a shot in the dark. Yeah. And everyone showed up. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it was just an incredible time. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was great uh, catch up with Sylvain Cote. Because yeah. you, you like to see where the Whalers, uh, you know, old Whaler, where they end up. What are they doing? Uh, Sounds he was, like he's having a good time. Yeah, and he was very passionate about uh, Quebec City getting the team back. And, boy, it would be great to have uh, Quebec, Hartford, Montreal, Buffalo, uh, Boston, Boston. Vision again. Only because... Uh, you know, the, the proximity is there, but the, you know those rivalries were, were just great, and uh, there's nothing you wrong. You can catch them on YouTube all right. the time. Quebec and Hartford, they yep. battled, they had fought. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, we just want to remind you guys, and it was a good segue that yeah. you brought up the Fan Fest, and, and we we're talking about it, that July 16th at 7 p.m. at Muzzy Field in Bristol, we will be having Whaler Night, and Peter and I hopefully will be throwing out the first pitch if they don't make too too much fun of us. Um, <laughs> we're trying to get some former whalers there. We can't promise anything. Yeah. Uh, we are going to have a petition to bring back the NHL. We are also going to have a sign-up sheet for people who might be interested if we can push it through the Department of Motor Vehicles to create a Hartford Whalers license plate. Okay. We will need a signature for that because we will have to get at least 250 signatures who's interested for a Hartford Whalers license plate. You see them with the Bruins, the Red Sox, you see them with UConn, why can't we have the Whalers? The Whalers are just as important to this area in Hartford specifically as the Yukon Huskies are today. Yeah. Uh, we are That is part of Hartford and Connecticut history. Yeah, 250 people is not a lot of people to ask to sign up to, uh, you know, get this permanently put on the license plate. Uh, you know, especially, you know, you'll have one if the team comes back, you already have your license plate all set. Right. Uh, you don't have to buy it, you just, we're just asking for signups. We just need 250 people to sign up to say that they would like to see that on license plates. And then the Department um, of Motor Vehicle will go forward right, once we get the 250. Get but it's, uh, it's, not, it's not an impossible task. Uh, and it would be a neat thing to have. Heck, I would, I would get one with a heartbeat. I'd get one in a heartbeat. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it would be really cool to have. And, uh, and again, as for Muzzy Field, uh, on July 16th, 
Uh, that's going to be going to play Brass Bonanza every time the team scores. As Jerry said, the petition and the email. Uh, we're even going to have a sign-up sheet that uh, we're going to do for season ticket holders. Get your email address, and uh, you know we'll get that to the right people. So uh, you know it'll be an interesting thing to see how many people we can get Muzzy Field and uh, pack the place, play some Brass Bonanza. And uh, you know, Pucky's going to be there as well. So we're really what's the most to important it? thing they yeah. have to do? What yeah. do they have to do? You have to wear green. Yeah. We want people to wear green. Whaler's shirt, Whaler's T-shirt, yeah. jersey, uh, anything green. If you don't own any of that, go out and buy it. Listen, <laughs> we're number two behind the Montreal Canadiens. We were at one point yeah. uh, uh, a couple summers ago. And and you know what? Let's let's support the product. I have tons of shirts. My wife thinks I'm nuts, but you know mm -hmm. what? This is part of the game. We are bought into this. The brigade. It's time for you guys to come out, show the support. They're five dollar. I think they're five dollar tickets for general yeah. admission. So you know what? You're not breaking the bank. Right. It's a great cause. They're collegiate baseball players. Let's all get out there and make some noise and let the NHL know we're around. We're going to take pictures, we're going to take videos, and we're going to plug it up on the board and we're going to see who comes. We've invited the media, so they're, they're going to come as well. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions, reach out on Facebook or Twitter to uh, Peter and myself uh, with the Whalers Brigade.